Okay, we're rolling. This is an interview at the Public Library Center Mariches, New York, uh, the 9th of March, 2004. Um, it's approximately 10 o'clock. Um, the interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name and your date of birth, please, and place of birth? All right, my full name is Robert Arnold Pichella. Uh, place of birth was uh, Jacksonville, Florida, July 27th, 1921. I have a twin brother who was born just after I did. <clears throat> okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, high school. Mm -hmm. um, did you... It, you enlisted in the, in the Navy? We enlisted um, August 8th. Why did you both decide to go into the Navy? Well, at that time you couldn't find jobs. Mm -hmm. there was, it was nothing. So we felt it was better off going to the Navy, learning a trade, either spend uh, 20 or 30 years in. And, and if we, we got out before time, we'd have a trade in back of us. Mm -hmm. But when did you <clears throat> enlist? We uh, enlisted... Uh, August 8th, 1940. Mm -hmm. Okay, where did you go for your training? We went to uh, Newport, Rhode Island. And we were there for, th was it three months, two months, two, three months, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to pass a swimming test and whatever, parade and taking orders and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't bad. And from that, we, we were put on a train and sent, sent across country to, uh, I believe it was San, the San Diego Naval Station. So let me stop. Uh, we, were, we were put on train, went across country, mm -hmm. and then we were, uh, there was an officer that was so many went in this line, so many in that line. They separated my brother and I. So I said, no way. So I went back to my, where my brother was online. The officer said, get back. I said, no, I said, I'm, not, I'm not leaving my brother. My, I said, he's my twin brother. I'm not leaving him. He said, oh, okay, okay, stay there, stay there. But twins, they didn't separate, mm -hmm. uh, especially after the Sullivan uh, yes. uh, fiasco there. Oh, and the five Sullivan boys were, were killed. Mm -hmm. Brothers, they separate. Twins, they don't. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when you, you went out to California? You we went to California. What uh, specific training? Were, were you, did you receive more training? No, or were no. You it, was to there, it was there for only uh, to send us on different ships to separate mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And what were you assigned to? I was assigned to the helm, the USS helm, mm -hmm. number 388. Or destroy you. Mm -hmm. What they, were your duties and the destroyer? Well, I was uh, started out. I was a seaman, a seaman, uh, swabbing the deck and uh, whatever everywhere. And then I I was a striker for the tor torpedo gang. And my brother went below decks. He was uh, a, a a machinist mate. Mm -hmm. Now, what does a striker do? Could you explain your duties as a striker? A striker, you learn. You learn your trade. You're learning. What did you do as a striker? Well, uh, get the torpedoes, put them, put them in the tubes, or, or clean the tubes, or, yeah. And then I was sent back to school to Newport, Rhode Island, a uh, torpedo school. Uh, about about a year later, and then I was sent back to my ship across country again, and uh, I got on the ship, I think it was about maybe June, June or July of 41. It, it, it was July, my father passed away in June 41 on Father's Day, so I was home at that time. I was Both of you were given leave for that? So, uh, yeah. Not that I was given leave. Well, I was given I was given a week off to come home and uh, 
to be with the family. Your brother also? No. Oh, he wasn't? No. Huh. No, they didn't give it to him. Huh. But uh, I was given the time off, and I called in and got a, uh, an extra week. And uh, then I went back, finished the uh, course, and went back to my ship. Went back to the West Coast, and the West Coast I got on the, uh, the Saratoga, and the Saratoga brought me back to Pearl Harbor. And uh, must have been around July. I was back on the uh, back on my ship. Now, what uh, did the helm do? Uh, did you, it didn't just stay in port? What escort duty? Escort. Mm. And I took the test for third class petty officer, and I wanted to pass it so bad. I bought a few extra notes with me. And they saw me copying notes, and they said, that's it. They picked the paper yeah. up. I was cheating. So that was it. So I didn't make, I didn't make very class. But during the, uh, after Pearl Harbor, we had a, gu a gunnery officer, uh, uh, an ensign. His name was Dibdol. From now, I understand now he's uh, uh, a, a rear admiral. He, made, he, he graduated a rear admiral. And he says, we're at war with, with uh, Italy. We can't trust the Italians. Take uh, Patella out of the torpedo gang and put in mess cooking and stand and watch us. And that hit me. Now I know how those, the uh, blacks feel. Mm -hmm. And um, I, didn't want, I didn't want any part of the Navy. I'm willing. I was willing to give to give my life for my country, but but when that came out that I was no good because of my nationality, I said that's it. Anyway, uh, we went. We uh, after Pearl Harbor, we went to uh, uh, two two. Tier, I think it's a Howard and uh, one at Baker, the Baker Islands. There were four four men. No, there were two men on, on Howard and four men on Baker. They, were, they would send in the weather report of those islands to the uh, to United States, the weather report, uh, station. And uh, we took them off. And we were all alone then. And while we were out there, a Japanese flying boat came over and dropped his bombs. He missed us. <laughs> and, and we missed him. He was as big as big as this room, and we're firing at him like crazy. He dropped his bombs and he took off. But uh, Pearl Harbor was some another. Yeah. Well, could you tell us about that? Uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, when it it happened, first happened. We were we were under. We had steam up, and uh, we were we were going to the uh, to the docks to pick up men and uh, supplies to come on back to the states. And we're about halfway there. In the middle of Pearl Harbor is Fort Allen. Mm -hmm. Now we're just about ready, gonna go across to Fort Allen and go over to the shoreline over here where the where the docks were. And we're about this way. the The entrance is over here. With they have a, they had a net, a, a net that the ship would clo open and close. And. Uh, we had our canvas up over the ship to uh, protect us from the sun, because and then it was even warm then. It was about 75, 80 degrees in, and um, the first bomber, or the first plane, dropped its bomb, the Japanese plane, and it it landed on the ramp of this Fort Allen. There's a ramp there to to pull the seaplanes up, and I said, "What the hell are they doing? Holding holding bombing practice here in the island?" Uh, uh, right here in the harbor? What are they, crazy? The next bomb hit one of the hangars on Fort Allen. That hangar went up in the air like a piece of paper. It, oh, nothing. It was, it was, it was like nothing. Boom! And, uh, and then we said, so what? And the devil, and we saw the, the red circles. Oh, my God. Never, we never imagined that this would happen. But we were out looking for them for a solid week of looking for the Japanese subs, and uh, we didn't find them. One ship did. One ship did find them, 
and uh, and they sank him. So a, a Japanese sub was sunk before Pearl Harbor. But anyway, as we, my and my brother Richard, he was in one of these small thirty-foot motor uh, motor whale boats, and uh, he was following the ship to the to the docks. I don't know why they didn't pick this ship this boat up, but we used this boat for liberty or uh, different errands they had to do, and. Uh, but he would, so we backed up. We didn't even, they didn't even bother picking him up. We just backed up and boom, we headed right out. And as we headed out in the mouth of the harbor, there's a Japanese sub. We fired at it with our five inch guns, five inch. We fired, he kept firing, we kept missing. And the, the uh, captain of our ship said, if we don't hit it the next time, next salvo, we're, we're going to ram it. Because if he sinks a ship at the mouth of the harbor, that harbor is tied up. So we the did. The submarine was on the surface. It it was on the it was it was on the surface, mm -hmm. sort of half and half. Mm -hmm. A two man sub. It's not. Well, I think they're about from here to the wall. You can't stand up in them. They crawl. You know, they crawl inside. They're two men in it, and they have a torpedo forward and one back. That's all. But. Two of them got in the harbor. There were two in Pearl Harbor. They followed the ship right in. And anyway, we fired at him, and we got him. We, well, they blew it up. And then there were two sh planes way up high. And we fired at We fired at them with our five-inch guns. And uh, the shrapnel, I don't know if it, I don't think it hit any of them, but one of them circled around. He came around. And as he dropped his bomb, the ship veered, veered to the uh, to the port side, and it the bomb missed us. But the bomb was very close, and the ship went up in the air and boom down again. It, it really slapped. It, it knocked the um, the uh, conning tower for the uh, for the guns. It knocked it knocked it out of whack. In fact, they had to come back to the states to have it have it repaired. And uh, so we were out there, and and we waited for the rest of the uh, of the the ships to come out. There weren't there weren't very many coming out. There were eight eight battleships there in that harbor, and eight battleships were sunk. Eight of them were sunk completely. They were wiped out. And uh, I mean, they did they really did damage. And they wanted to come back and finish it finish it off. But uh, I guess their general said, no way. They said, we're only here to do one thing, and that is to uh, to attack and leave. But they, I think they wanted, to, they wanted to show us a lesson. And uh, because we were telling them to get out of China and uh, uh, Korea, wherever. And uh, we, were, uh, we were sanctioning them. We weren't sending them. Actually, they were getting nothing from us, mm -hmm. and and they knew right along that we had a. They had a couple of uh, envoys in Washington at the time, uh, talking peace peace talks. But they knew right along that this that this was going to happen, and they never apologized for this raid. Never, and uh, to this day, they never never ne never apologized, and I think that's. That was wrong. Over 2,500 men were killed that day. The uh, the battleship, the uh, Arizona, they had a, a armor piercing bomb went through the deck of that ship, and it hit the it hit the the, the magazine on the Arizona, and that ship, oh my God, is about. I think 1,100 men lives were were wiped out in that in in, in those, those few minutes. The 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 water was on fire. The oil from the ships were on the water, and the it was on, the men were were diving off into that fire, and they were coming up and separating the fire and taking a breath and go down again to swim. A few of them, few of them got got away with it, but uh, the majority didn't.
On this form you filled out, you said you saw the Japanese pilots were actually laughing. You could oh, see them. Oh, you could see those pilots flying. They were so low. They were, they were as high as a ceiling. And you could see them laughing and joking and whatever. They were having a ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could see now, them. Um, Our ship was straight. Machine gun bullets. Mm -hmm. Luckily no one was hit. Did you... Uh, have any other ammunition? Did you use the uh, any of the uh, NA aircraft batteries at all? Or we didn't have any. All we had was five inch, had guns, five inch guns, and we had a couple of fifty caliber machine guns, mm -hmm. and that was it. So now, now I know they have oh, they have rockets, they have everything yes. there yeah. now. And now, when you saw these things happening, what were, what were you doing at this time? Well, I was trying. I was trying to do. It. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, fire the uh, uh, torpedoes at them. Mm, that's yes, for sure. Right. Right. And uh, so you were on deck, though. I was on deck, and and I'm 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 looking for a gun. I want to get something mm -hmm. to to fire back at them, and I couldn't. So the uh, the uh, one of the chiefs said, "Go go below deck, and uh, see if you can help the electrician." Now, I know. I don't know the first thing about. Uh, uh, electric and what am I going to do below deck but I went down there anyway and the electrician all of a sudden screams uh, he put a uh, uh, he crossed the wires or whatever he did there and he got a big flash and he screamed I said what am I doing down here <laughs> I don't know the first thing about this and uh, and that's when the 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 ship uh, uh, was bounced up in the air and I went and I hit the deck my head hit the hit the bulkhead. And I went down to the deck, and I got up. I was groggy, but I got up and I went up, up, up above deck anyway. And uh, pretty soon, the ship came back, and uh, we came back in Monday Monday morning. The ship came back into port. Oh, what damage! Now something we, that hasn't been told. That ships, planes came from the plane carrier, one of the plane carriers, to reinforce the island. And they were fired upon by own, our own men, thinking the Japanese, they were Japanese planes. They opened fire on them and uh, they shot them down. But you don't hear about that. Now what happened to your brother when he was on this he uh, was, smaller boat? No, he went. He went on uh, the, the big cane field there. So they, in fact, his his little boat was straight. But luckily, they landed aboard shore and they 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 hit the shoreline and they went in this cane field to get away from them. And um, the cane field underneath that cane field was a an ammunition dump. So if they ever dropped a bomb on that cane field, that whole cane field would have gone up in the air. And anyway, he was, uh, after the uh, raid, uh, he went around picking up bodies. There were, you know, different bodies floating in the water. And uh, what I hear, too, uh, disturbed me that the Japanese pilots, there, I think there were 26 planes were shot down. Those, those pilots were given an a honorable barrier. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. But seeing that they were they were uh, officers or whatever, you're given an honorable burial. I'll give them an honorable burial. Now um, you left the navy then in uh, '42. Uh, August '40, yeah '42. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know what happened. We came we came to uh, uh, the states and. Uh, I, I just lost my mind uh, with the, uh, the thought of being uh, of my my nationality and and the loss of all those men. I, I don't know. I went I went cuckoo, and uh, I'm not proud of the fact that I wound up in the hospital, and uh, they had me down as a psycho. Mm -hmm. So. And the only thing that took me out of it, my mother called. I, maybe I was in there a couple, three or four months, and she called. 
and uh, she started crying on the phone. And first, I didn't know who I was talking to. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, did your brother stay in, in the service? He stayed in mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you ever have any side effects from your service now? No, no. I get headaches once in a while, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I can attribute that it to that or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they, you were discharged in... in uh, August 28th, August 42. 42. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I got an honorable medical discharge. And I, I got a 30% disability pension. So I've been getting that since 41, 42. And uh, I go to the VA hospital for you know, medical medicine, whatever. And that's about it. Did you uh, make use of the GI Bill at all? Uh, at the uh, discharge? No. I went to a, a, a refrigeration school. Uh -huh. Refrigeration, air conditioning, whatever. So I don't know if I went under that bill or not. Probably, I don't know, probably did. Mm -hmm. But I wanted I wanted to go into the medical field. This is what I should have done, but I didn't. Oh well, and the time passes on. Do you uh, ever go to any reunions or do you belong to any veterans uh, no, organizations? No, no, I'm, my, my brother, is, uh, he goes, he's been going to them. Your and brother's still living. Where he's he live? still living in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and uh, he goes. He goes to them, and he said, "Come on, why don't you go?" I said, "No." I said, "I'm, I'm ashamed. Uh, I feel, I feel very bad about, you know, whatever happened," and uh, I said, "I can't. I can't go." <clears throat> so they, he says, "Okay, all right." He says, "I understand." Mm -hmm. said, okay. Did you, uh, after you got out of service, did you follow what was happening with newspapers and so on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Da daily. Daily news. Was it uh, Kaltenberg or one of the news newscasters? Oh, he would come on. He used to, oh, he used to get me. Hmm. And uh, this one person I knew, Listen to him faithfully. Mm -hmm. I said, "What do you listen to that guy for? He's a he, he's a killjoy." How do you think um, your time in service changed or affected your life, or do you think it did in any way? Oh, oh I, I think I think it showed me uh, it it taught me a, a respect respect for others. And listen to what others have to say, and and uh, it really it. I think I think every boy should go in and have a have a go at uh, taking orders and giving orders and whatever. It's the best thing in the world for him. Did you, uh, <clears throat> once you got out of the service of 42 after you were hospitalized, did you work in the any of the defense plants? Or I went, uh, yes, I did go. I was making 60 cents an hour. That's what the pay was then. And uh, a defense plant, we made uh, the, uh, the, uh, the struts for the planes. Mm -hmm. the, uh, when the plane landed, it you know, would take up the shock. Right. Was that Shock a, absorbers. Was that Lockheed you worked for? No, no, it was uh, Dowdy. The name was Dowdy. D O W T Y. Okay. And uh, whereabouts was that? Whereabouts? It, it was in uh, not not long uh, near Woodside, between Woodside and Long Island City. Okay. Uh, right in that area, Forty Eight. I think it was Forty Eight Street, right off of Northern Boulevard. Now, once the war ended, uh, did you continue in that job, or did the job end with the well, war? Well, that job ended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ended. They let, laid everyone off. And uh, I went into the refrigeration. Uh, and from that, I, in the refrigeration, you work 20 hours during the summer months. In the winter months, 
They laid you off. So I went into the post office. I spent 18 years in that. I spent 18 years in the post office. I gave that up and I went into the uh, uh, theater, projectionist. I spent 25 years in that, doing that. Mm -hmm. I retired in 80, 89. I retired from the uh, theater. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I saw a lot of movies. <laughs> and it's like working in a candy factory. You start eating the candy, and then after all, you can't stand the sight of it. I, have, I haven't been back to the movie theater since. I haven't seen a movie, except on television. I may watch one. But uh, I haven't been back to the theater since then. And then... Well, when I when I was young, I first went to the theater. He, it was ten it was ten cents to get in. The admission price was ten cents. Today it's it's ten dollars. And <laughs> that's an awful awful difference. Uh, okay. Well, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. For your